Have the Japanese brands lost the plot? Have they lost their mojo? Why do they seem to put so little effort into innovating and updating? This recent news report highlights the issue. ま、<笑><笑> During the 70s and 80s, Honda, Suzuki, Yamaha and Kawasaki dominated the market with great dual sport bikes that were actually reliable and well priced too. But the Europeans gradually caught up and typically their models perform better and can often match the Japanese for reliability. Sure, occasionally there's some excitement around a new model like the Africa Twin or Yamaha Tenere, but it's slim pickings. Today, the Japanese brands are happy to rest on their laurels and let the Europeans eat into their market share. Why? I suspect there are a few answers. First, these are huge companies. Yamaha makes musical instruments, outboard motors, hi-fis and sporting equipment. Suzuki makes cars, outboard engines, wheelchairs and ATVs. Honda makes cars, power equipment, robots and aircraft. <laughs> and Kawasaki makes airplanes, ships, missiles, helicopters, monorails, trains and gas turbines, just for starters. So when you get that big, motorbikes are usually just a small part of your business. And of course the original passion for creating motorbikes becomes completely dominated by profit. Simply put, the shareholders become more important than the consumers. And innovating can become an expensive risk. And when it comes to profit, the Japanese know which bikes, of course, are making the most money. We like to think it's the sports bikes, the adventure bikes or the off-road bikes, what we like riding. But the biggest markets are for small models selling in China, Southeast Asia and India. For example, Honda's biggest market is India, selling models you have never heard of. The Honda Unicorn, Shine, Activa, Levo and Grazia. If pumping out endless small bikes is bringing home the bacon, why risk money on innovating expensive bikes for small markets? There are other possible factors as well. Since the 1990s, Japan's economy took a turn for the worse, so business strategies became very conservative across the board. So if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Just keep selling those old models if they keep selling. Boring never looked so good. We didn't fix the doohickey problem or make any of the changes you requested, but it has a new color scheme, Kawasaki. Let the good times snore. Sometimes it doesn't pay to make changes. Famous bikes like the DR650 and XR650L are still sold in some countries under a grandfather clause. As long as you don't change the design significantly, you don't need to meet the more recent, tighter emission laws. So it's easier to just not change anything. Many argue that Japan's strength was in research and development. They rarely pired anything new, but they would take another brand's idea and make it work really well. But of course, today, the European brands have become very good, not only at innovating, but creating new models that are often just as reliable as the Japanese. Japan would have an uphill battle if it wanted to regain mastery of the market as it did in the 1970s. Finally, motorcycles have an uncertain future. Millennials are less inclined to buy a vehicle, let alone learn how to ride or drive. Emission laws may well kill off large capacity motorbikes. 
environmental restrictions make the future of all off-road riding very uncertain in some countries. In 2017, Honda CEO Takahiro Hajigo said, there's no doubt we lost our mojo, our way as an engineering company that made Honda, Honda. There's no doubt Japan is still making some awesome bikes and they are as reliable as a brick toilet. And often these old models are still great. I love riding my old dinosaur, <laughs> the DR650, which hasn't changed since 1996. But can the Japanese brands become the innovative powerhouse again as they were in the past? Should they try? Keen to know your thoughts? Let us know in the comments.